Okay, hi again, people. Um, my calculus friends. So let's go ahead and work with the tangential and normal vectors. Now, I will be talking about some of the formulas. So again, make sure you read the slides before you come into these videos. Um, because there's some information you need inside those things, okay? So definitely, definitely make sure you read the slides. Now, let's go here. This is 12.4. And I don't know, should I keep the light off or on? I just feel like this is way more contrast. So it's easier to see, but then sometimes there's parts where there's glare and you can't see so well. So I may just like turn it off for a second um, when we get further down. Okay. So let's see. Number one, we have we have red, so I can do number one. Um, I'm gonna write this in its component form as always, because that's just my preference. And then we have what is that? T equal to five. And so what it wants me to do is it wants me to find the unit tangent vector at this specific point. And so in the slides, it does talk about the unit tangent vector. Where does it come from? It comes from R prime over the magnitude of R prime. Okay, and so for computational purposes, we're gonna try to figure this out. Um, my biggest advice is to find, if, whenever they're asking you to plug in a value, and it only when you're asking you to plug in a value, if they're not asking to plug in values, then you do have to do the entire fraction, okay? Um, but the reason why I'm saying this is because if you're trying to find the tangent of five, you're basically doing R prime of five over the magnitude of R prime of five. Now, if you are not plugging in a number, then you actually need to figure out what this looks like algebraically with all the T's and everything in it, okay? If you are plugging in a number, then you don't have to know what it looks like algebraically. You can just plug in the number into R prime. Once you have that vector, find the magnitude of that, okay? That's the easiest way to do it when you have to plug in a number. It's only when you don't have a number to plug in that you actually have to see what this looks like, okay? So let's go ahead and work on R prime first. So R prime is gonna be three T squared and six T. So then R prime of five would be um, five squared, which is 25 times three, which is 75. And then five times six is just 30. And so then that means that the magnitude of r prime of five would actually equal the square root of 75 squared plus 30 squared, which is who knows what, oops, my calculator is not on. Oh God, it doesn't tell me. So 75 squared plus 30 squared is, Six five two five, and I don't know what that is. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. The calculator won't do it when it's in the the hundreds here. So six five two five divided by five is one three zero five. That number divided by five is two, six, one. So this is equal to five squared times two, six, one, which is five squared to two, six, one. And let's see if the calculator will simplify the square root of two, six, one. It does. It tells me that it's three squared to 29. So then this becomes 15 squared to 29. So then what is T? T of five is going to be the vector 7530 divided by the magnitude of R prime five, which is 15 square root of 29. 
So let's see, 75 divided by 15, that is just five. So five over square root of 29. And then 30 divided by 15 is two over square root of 29. Now, I normally like to rationalize my denominators, but I noticed that in a lot of the problems, look at number three at the bottom. They have five over square root of two. That's not rationalized, okay? So it should accept this as your answer. Um, I don't know that I wanna type in every single one, but I'm going to type in this one for sure, just to make sure that this is accepted. Um, symbols, no operations, yes. So five over square root of 29, get over, over, comma, fraction two over the square root of 29. Let's make sure we got it all right. I might have made an error, but hopefully not. Um, yay, okay, good. Now we'll move on. Let's see number two. Number two also has red, so yay. Number two, we have r of t equal to nine cosine of t comma nine sine of t. And we know that t is equal to pi over four. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. Find our prime of t, that is negative nine sine of t and nine cosine of t. Then find r prime of pi over four. So sine of t is square root of two, sine of pi over four is square root of two over two. So this means negative 18 square root of two over two, so nine square root of two over two. Negative nine square root of two over two. And then cosine of pi over four square root of two over two, so this is nine positive square root of two over two. And then if I wanna find the magnitude of our prime, That means the square root of this guy squared plus this guy squared, which is 81, 81 times two over four. So 81 over two. And then plus 81 times two over four. So another 81 over two, which is the square root of 81, which is just nine. So that means tangent of pi over four is gonna be this vector. Divided by nine, which means you get negative square root of two over two and square root of two over two. Negative square root of two over two, oops, too far, comma, square root of two over two. Okay, number three, we may be able to fit in here. Let's see, does number three have red? Yes, it does. Okay, great. So, we have r of t equal to five cosine t, five sine of t, and then four is my third component, which is totally okay. It's just the third component, right? And my point, it doesn't give me the t value, it gives me p. Five over square root of two, five over square root of two, and four. So in order for us to find t, we basically need to figure out this setup. We know that five cosine of t is gonna equal five square root of two. And we know that five sine of t is gonna equal five square root of two. We need to figure out the t value that makes both of those things happen at the same time, okay? So if I divide both sides by five, it will become cosine of t equals one over square root of two which is the same as square root of two over two. 
and sine of t will equal one over square root of two, which is the same as square root of two over two. Now, where in the unit circle is the cosine equal to this and the sine? That happens when t is pi over four, both positive, okay? So that's the t value here. This one is different in that one, it's in three dimensions instead of two dimensions, like the last two problems. And then two, we have to actually go and find t where we didn't have to do that. We were given t for problems one and two, okay? But once we have that, we're doing the same thing, finding r prime, which is negative five sine of t and five cosine of t and derivative of four zero. When I plug in the t value that I just found, I get negative five square root of two over two, positive five square root of two over two and a zero. If I wanna find the magnitude of this value of this vector, it's going to be negative five square root of two over two squared plus five square root of two over two squared plus zero squared, which I believe is just five, but I'm gonna verify, okay? So the square root parentheses fraction negative five square root of two over two, close the parentheses, square it plus the other fraction and then plus zero squared, which I don't really need to type in, but it does equal just five in the calculator, okay? Um, so then that means that T of no prime, just T of pi over four is going to equal this vector over the magnitude five, which means I get negative square root of two over two, positive square root of two over two, comma zero. And since I already typed that up here, I'm just gonna copy, control C, put it in here, paste. No, it doesn't let me. No, it doesn't let me, dang it, okay. I thought I could just copy and paste and put a comma zero in there, but no, it won't let me. So negative square root of two over two, comma, fraction, positive square root of two over two, comma zero. Okay, now moving on to number four. So in number four, they wanna know the principal unit normal vector. Now that one's a little bit more complicated because that one requires us to do the derivative of the tangent, okay? And so in this one, uh, this one means I cannot shortcut it because in order for me to find the um, what am I looking at? Oh, I missed some piece. Okay, so it says find a set of parametric equations for the line tangent to the space curve at point P. So this is back to number three, and um, I don't have that on here, but doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to think. In order for me to find the parametric equations, I'm gonna have to have those direction numbers, the A, B, and C, okay? In order for me to find those direction numbers, A, B, and C, so this is not number four, this is number three, continued. Um, in order for me to find those direction vectors, I am gonna have to um, find something that's normal to the position vector, okay? And specifically at the value that we're talking about, okay? Because um, it says it wants to find the set of parametric equations for the line tangent to the space curve at point P, okay? So if you're talking about 
your tangency, um, you're basically talking about um, your derivative, right? So, okay, this is three dimensions. So it's in a, like a helix where it's going around and around, but it's also going up at the same time, okay? If I take the Z component out of it, because it does say that the Z component is zero, right? Whether you're talking about R prime or tangent, um, if you take it to just two dimensions, essentially what you have is you have a circle and then you have this point pi over four, which is about right there, okay? And the vector here is this vector, where's the R? Is this vector right here, okay? So the vector here is negative five or five square root of two over two and then positive five square root of two over two and then zero, okay? Um, if you take, think about the tangent, the tangent line is going in this direction. That is perpendicular to this point, okay? To this vector here. So this tangential vector is going to be your, um, is gonna be what you need, okay? So essentially what that tells me is that if I'm finding the tangent line, right, to R, R is this point here, and that Y coordinate is not zero, that Y coordinate is four. And notice that it's positive, positive five square root of two, positive five square root of two over square root of two, and then the Z value would be four, so you'd be up somewhere in your four units, okay? But if I'm talking about the tangential, that's this one here, or that's the derivative one. And the tangential, this line right there, that vector is this one, negative five square root of two over two. Oh my God, I'm just writing this thing all messed up. Okay, let me, I'm trying to say what I'm saying, but I feel like I'm saying it mixed up, okay? So let me explain. This vector right here is the point. The point right there is five over square root of two, five over square root of two comma four, okay? Which is also, if you think of the vector, since that's the terminal point of the vector starting at the origin, then this vector, I'm gonna put a little arrow, is if I rationalize this, is five square root of two over two, and then five square root of two over two, and then four, okay? So that's essentially R at the pi over four, okay? So R of pi over four is this vector here. Now this vector that is got a 90 degree angle, so it's perpendicular, so it's normal, to your position vector, that vector has the, um, at this spot, okay, is the vector negative square root of five, not square root of five, why do I keep doing that? Negative five square root of two over two, and then positive five square root of two over two, and then the zero. Okay, because that's the derivative of the R at that same point, okay? So this is R prime of pi over four, okay? This one, because it is um, normal to R, this is the one where you're gonna get your A, B, and your C from, okay? So when I go to write my equations, my X is gonna be the X coordinate of the point, five over square root of two plus this guy, which is a negative five square root of two over two T. I can clean that up. It's five square root of two over two times one minus T. Then Y equals the Y coordinate plus this guy times T which is five square root of two over two and one plus T, right? This is five square root of two over two. If you rationalize it, it'll look like this, okay? Just not with a T. And then Z um, would be the Z coordinate, which is four on the point plus zero T, which is just four, 
okay? And it does want me to enter them in as a comma separated list. So it would literally be this comma, this comma, or, okay? But it'll actually be x equals this comma, y equals this comma, z equals four, okay? And that's how you'll do the rest of part three. So if we go in here, we're gonna type in x equals fraction five square root of two over two parentheses one minus t comma y equals fraction five square root of two over two parentheses one plus t comma z equals four and we'll confirm whether or not it's correct i had to think about that one for a second i almost glossed right over it Moment of truth, yes, we got checks. Okay, great. Okay, now number four, finally. <laughs> we can move on to number four. So this one is the one that's asking us for the normal vector. Now, because it's asking us for the normal vector, unfortunately, um, we are going to have to find the tangent vector without plugging in the number just yet, okay? So we have R. And that's t, and then I'm going to say 6t to the negative 1, okay? And then t is equal to 2. So when I'm finding r prime, it's going to be um, 1, and then negative 6t to the negative 2, which is the same as 1 comma negative 6 over t squared. So then r or the magnitude of r prime is going to be the square root of one squared plus negative six over two squared squared. And here's where all of your algebra is going to come back. So if I get a common denominator, that'll be t4 over t4, which will be this. And then I can take this out as one over two squared, t to the four plus 36, okay? So that is our, the magnitude of our prime. So if I want t, it's going to be this vector over this thing here. which can be written as t to the fourth plus 36 to the negative one half exponent. And then this is gonna just go up as a t squared and then one negative six over t squared, which can also further be simplified as this, t squared and negative six, right? If you distribute that t squared in there. This part you don't wanna distribute, just because you're gonna to have to do the magnitude of t, and it's just easier if that guy's already factored out, okay? Um, you could choose not to keep it factored out, but it does really help if it is factored out. So now we're gonna do the magnitude of t, and why am I doing that? Because the definition of the normal or the principal unit normal vector is, um, is t prime, over the magnitude of t prime. So I'm actually doing the magnitude too soon, aren't I? I'm glad I said that out loud because otherwise I'd have been going on and on and on for nothing. Okay, so now that we have t, we can find n. And in order to find n, we have to find t prime and the magnitude of t prime, okay? So um, for t prime, obviously we're gonna have to do a, a product rule here. So t prime, of t. That's going to be the first one times the derivative of this one plus the original here. No, the derivative of this one. So negative one half and then it become negative three halves and then the original of the other. 
right? So I have original, derivative, derivative, original. Okay, great. Oh, I forgot the chain rule, didn't I? Oh, 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 oh. Cannot forget the chain rule. So I brought the power down and then I decreased the power by one, but then you also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I forgot all about that. Okay, there we go. Now we're talking. So if I simplify this, I am going to factor out um, the lowest exponent. So I'm going to factor out t to the fourth plus 36 negative three halves. When I do that, this one's going to turn into t4 plus 36 to the one regular, right? Because negative three halves plus one will give me negative one half. Um, and I still have this vector to t comma zero. Then here, these are gonna reduce. So I'm gonna have minus two, this is gone, and then t squared comma negative six. So let's see what we have here. So I'm gonna have um, two t to the fifth plus 36 t, and then minus two t squared. And then for the last thing, it's going to be 0 plus 12, which is just 12. Right? Is that right? 2t to the fifth. Oh, not 36, 72. 2 times 36 is 72. So that, that times that, that times that. And then we're going to minus this t squared. And then 0 times both of these is 0 plus 12. OK, great. So that's what we have so far three terms in the first component, one term in the second component, and then this factor. And now I have to find the magnitude of t prime, which means the square root. And since this is already factored out, I am gonna have that multiplied. There's literally no sense in distributing it and then factoring it out when it comes in the square root. So we're just going to write this as a uh, multiple, and we're going to do this guy. So you get 2t to the fifth plus 72t minus 2t squared squared plus 12 squared. I have a feeling like more stuff should have canceled. So. Oh, I see. These guys should cancel. No. Oh, yes. Ha, 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 ha. This is 2t cubed. That's why. Look, this reduced with this giving me 2, but I still have the t cubed. And then this guy came out. So 2t cubed times t squared gives me negative 2t to the fifth. And then that changes this here because then you have 0 plus 12t cubed. Ha, 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 ha. So there are so many places to make errors in these problems. You really have to be very careful. So I get 72t comma 12t cubed. That's essentially what I'm working with. So when I go over here, I already have that factor factored out. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in because it's this is a big one. It's awful, but it's big. So when I'm here, I already have this factor on the outside. I'm just gonna do 72t squared plus 12t cubed squared. And then we can try to simplify that. Let's see if it does. t to the fourth plus 36, negative three halves. And we're going to get what? Mm, 72 squared. Is 5184t squared plus 144t to the sixth. Now I can factor out a t squared. And 
and probably a 144. 5184 divided by 144? Yes, I can. I end up with 36 plus um, T to the fourth, which is the same as saying T to the fourth plus 36 negative three halves. The square root of this is just 12 t. And then the square root of that is the same as saying t to the fourth plus 36, right? Doesn't matter what order these are in because they're addition um, to the one half. So then these two can be combined and you get 12 t times t to the fourth plus 36. And if I add those together, I get um, negative two over two, which is just negative one. Okay, so still have to find in, okay? In, and I'm thinking about it now, I probably could have plugged in two a long time ago. I probably could have plugged in two here and then just found the magnitude with the number two plugged in. But it's okay to do this because this is practice for when we're gonna be forced to do it later, okay? So this should be T prime over the magnitude of T prime. And so then what do we get? We have T prime, which is this. Over the magnitude of T, which is this. And so then if I simplify that, I'm gonna bring this up. So it's gonna add one. So I'm gonna get T to the fourth plus 36 to the negative one half. And then this divided by 12t, I think is six. And that divided by 12t is gonna be t squared. And so this is what you get for n of t. And if you wanna find n of two, two to the fourth, two to the fourth is 16, 16 plus 36 is 52 to the negative one half. Six and two squared is four. So what is the square root of 52? So this is six over four over two square root of 13 because of the negative exponent. So essentially you get three over square root of 13 and two over square root of 13. Let's go check it because that was a lot of craziness. And I hate whenever I do all this craziness and then I get it wrong. So let's go see. Normally when that starts to happen, I take a break because my brain's already fried. Um, so if you just start getting them wrong and it starts getting making you mad, <laughs> just stop um, and come back to it later. Even if just for like 20 minutes, go whatever it is you do, whether you drink a glass of water, smoke a cigarette, you know, go watch a TV show, whatever you got to do just to get your mind away from it for a minute. And then you can come back later. Okay. So moment of truth. Let's see if all that craziness worked out. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I get nervous, I swear. And the higher we get in these, in these concepts, the more nervous I get because I'm like, I'm the teacher, shouldn't make mistakes, but it happens. And, and it's not fun when it happens. So just bear with me. Ah, number five, I can't do. That one has, that one has the, the, um, I'm gonna show you something though, because I didn't realize this, okay? So that way you can use this technique when you do number five on your own. So for number four, okay, just a recap. Now we took, we took R, which was this, okay? And then we found R prime, which was this. And then we found the magnitude of R prime, which was one over T squared, oops, square root. t to the four plus 36. And then we found t, 
right? We found T. And after everything was said and done, we figured out that T was what? It was T to the fourth plus 36, negative one half times T squared, negative six. And then we found T prime. And when we finished finding T prime, all said and done, we ended up with this. Okay, so I'm basically telling you, we started off with R, right? We did R prime, we found that. We did R magnitude, magnitude of R prime, we found this. We put one over the other as we're supposed to. We simplified that and we got this for T, okay? Then we took the derivative of this using the product rules and all that, and we ended up with this, okay? Now, instead of trying to find the magnitude of T prime like this, what I could have done, if I wanted to find in of, what was the number two? Yeah, T was two. I could have just done T prime of two over the magnitude of T prime of two, okay? And so what I would have done is I would have plugged two into here and I would have received 52 to the negative three halves and then times this thing, which is 72 times two is 144. And then two to the third is eight and eight times 12 is 96. And so I would have ended up with this. And then to take the magnitude of that, I would have had this as a factor. And then I just needed to do the square root of 144 squared plus 96 squared, okay? And so these would have canceled and I would have had 144 and 96 divided by 144 squared plus 96 squared is the square root of 29952. 29952 divided by, hmm, 29952 divided by 12, divided by 12, oh yay. So I get, I just guessed with 12. I could have guessed with anything else. I was just trying to get this under a number. So apparently it's 144 times 208. And so then um, I know the square root of 144 is 12 and the square root of 208, according to the calculator is four square root of 13. So I just wanted to show you that there was a simpler way to do this. I just forgot and I always do. Um, and so I didn't use that simpler method, but I'm doing it now. Just so you can see, we do get the same thing. So 144 divided by 48 is three, but you still have that square root of 13 down there. And 96 divided by 48 is two, and you still have that square root of six, square root of 13 down there. Now notice that's the exact same thing that we got up here, okay? It's just, I didn't have the nightmare of trying to find the magnitude, like all of this part. I didn't have to worry about that part because um, it's so convoluted. I didn't have to worry about the magnitude of T because I could have just plugged in the two, right? And then just taken the magnitude of this and it is a little bit easier, okay? So I, I meant, I made a point at the beginning telling you that if you needed to plug in the number, then it makes it easier, but then I forgot to do it on number four, okay? So I'm just pointing that out because as you do number five, you may want to find R prime, you know, the magnitude of R prime, figure out what T is going to look like when you put this guy on top of that guy, then find your T prime. And then as soon as you find your T prime, just plug in the number they tell you to plug in, pi over six. And then once you know what that looks like, just find the magnitude of it downstairs and then simplify, okay? You don't have to find the magnitude of it with just T. You don't have to do it with the algebra expressions. Oh, God, I'm going to keep my pages in order. Okay, there we go. So number five, I'm going to skip. I want you guys to try to do that one on your own. You can always text me, though, if you get stuck or you don't know what you're doing, you're getting it wrong. Um, just text me, and I can always guide you, see where, where it is you are going wrong, and then we can go from there, okay? Now, um, 
number six. Number six, I can do. It does have red. So let's go on number six. Now there's multiple formulas to find A, T, and A, N. And it's the accelerate, the tangential acceleration component and the normal component of acceleration, okay? There's two components and there's multiple formulas for each. I have my favorite, okay? And so I am going to do this problem using my favorite version of those formulas. So we've got T and then two T to the negative one and there's no K component. So it's just two dimensional and T equal to three, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this formula for my um, tangential acceleration component. This is my favorite formula. Okay, again, you don't have to use mine. You can use whichever one you want, but this is just my favorite, okay? So if I know if this is my position vector, then I know that the uh, velocity vector is gonna be one, negative two T to the negative two. And I know that the acceleration vector is going to be zero and then four t to the negative three. And so then if I want to find a t, okay, um, and I am finding a t of that particular number, okay? So if I want to find a t of three, essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this guy with a three plugged in and dotted product with this guy with a three plugged in all over the square root because I'm doing the magnitude of this guy but with the three plugged in, okay? So what does that look like? That looks like one comma, we see negative two parentheses three raised to the negative two is negative two ninths. Dot product with zero, four parentheses three raised to the negative three, four over 27. And then I'm doing the square root. I already know what these values are. So when I square one, I get one. When I square negative two ninths, I get four over 81. So when I dot product this, one times zero is zero plus negative two times these two guys multiply together is gonna give me negative eight over nine times 27, 243. And then the square root of one plus four over 81. Oh God, that does not help me. 81 plus four is 85. So this is the square root of 85 over 81. So I get negative eight over 243 over the square root of 85 over nine, which means negative eight, 243 times nine over the square root of 85. And then 243 divided by nine is 27. So I get negative eight over 27 square root of 85. So that's the answer for A of T. Ugly, 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 but whatever. It is what it is. As long as you're doing all your computations correct, I know the answers look really weird sometimes, but they just are what they are. Um, as ugly as they look, <laughs> that's just what it is, okay? Um, don't think that because it looks ugly that that's not actually your answer, okay? Now, AN has a different formula. Again, there are multiple versions of what you can do. I have my favorite, so I want, I'm always going to do my favorite part of it, okay? Um, so the, the one that I like to use, and it's only because I already have the pieces that I need, is the magnitude of the cross product of V cross A over the magnitude of V. I already have these parts that I figured out when I was doing AT, okay? Now there is another formula for it, but I just, again, I'm using the ones that I prefer, right? So we're gonna do the magnitude of this guy 
crossed with this guy. And I have already done the magnitude of V, right? We figured it out. It was the square root of 85 over nine. So I don't need to do that part again, which is the beauty of why I like this, this particular formula. But I do need to do the cross product over here on the side of, oh, nope, there's no K component. I mean, there is in cross products, you have to have three components. Um, what you do is you just put zero, right? Because there's no um, 14, negative three and zero. So, or I could use another formula. I'm gonna try to see if it works like this with the zeros in it. And if it doesn't, then we'll use the other formula. I mean, it's not, awful it's just it's not the one that i usually go to okay so let's see if we cover this up we get um we get zero for the i we get zero for the j and then we get four t to the negative three for the k and so if i find the magnitude of that I get basically the square root of this thing squared, which is just four T to the negative three, okay? So you end up with a n equal to four T to the negative three over square root 85 over nine. Um, but I still need to plug in that number three into the numerator because I haven't done that yet, okay? Um, and actually I should have used, oh, I messed up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should have used the numbers when I already plugged in. I should have used this and this, and then that would have made more sense, um, but you still end up with the same thing, okay? I still end up with four over, 27 and then square root of 85 over nine. So what does that come out to? Four over 27 times nine over square root of 85. That equals three, four over three square root of 85. So let's see if that works. I don't know that it will, but let's try. If not, if putting those zero components in there was wrong, then we'll do the other formula. And that's okay. Can do the other formula. I just don't particularly like it. But normally my vectors are in three dimensions. So I've never had to like just put the zero in there. Okay. Um, oh, see, it worked. I was thinking I was okay, but every now and then I doubt myself. So we all do it. Um, but yeah, that worked. Okay, great. So that formula is perfectly okay to use. Again, the only thing I would have done to make it a tiny bit easier for myself is instead of using the variables, I should have used the vectors after I'd plugged in three, okay? So I basically would have had the same setup, okay? But with the cross product in the middle. And so when I came over here, I would be using one and negative two over nine and zero and four over 27. And then when I did it, I would have gotten the four over 27 and then the square root of four over 27 squared is just four over 27. And so I would have had the same thing here and here, okay? But let's go on. Oh, I can't do number seven. Number seven, you guys gotta do because number seven is very, very, very similar, okay? It's just two different functions, but very similar. But I would highly suggest that you use the technique that I used for number six on number seven. So here it is in case you wanna screenshot it. Um, I can't get it all in there, but here we go and screenshot the beginning where we found AT and then where we found AN. And again, you don't have to use these. You could have rewritten this, but with a cross in the middle instead of a dot, okay? Okay, and then the magnitude, of course. So you had to do the magnitude of that cross product. There we go. Now we can move on to number eight because I want you to practice with number seven. 
if I do it, I'm just going to give you the answer. And a lot of times people are lazy because, I mean, everybody's on time crunch. Just the reality of it, right? Everybody wants to save time. They'll just enter it in there and not try it, okay? So that's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, this one is actually the same thing. So I am going to do this one. I know I'm giving you the answer on this one, but it's kind of an important um, point to make. And there's lots and lots and lots of variables in there. So um, I am going to talk about this one, okay? So for number eight, we have R of T equal to A cosine of omega T comma A sine of omega T. And that's it. So it's two dimensions, okay? And so the first thing I need to do is find V of T by taking the derivative. So the derivative of cosine is negative. I have this constant multiplier. And when I do the chain rule, I'm going to get an omega. The same thing here. I have this constant multiplier. I'm going to get cosine. But then the chain rule says I have to take the derivative of this, which is going to give me another omega. OK. Um, so I do get this as my derivative. Now, for me to find the magnitude of this, that's going to be this guy squared and plus that guy squared. Well, if I square negative, it's gonna be positive. And when I square positive, it's also going to be positive. And if I factor out the AW, A squared, W squared, I do get one, right? Because you get sine squared of something plus cosine squared of the same thing. So really, this is just a W, okay? And so then it tells me um, that's all they want me to do is find the is find the magnitude. So I did. It's a W, right? We're gonna type in a W or no. I don't know. It's A is in a regular A but then they might want my Greek letter. No, it doesn't look like it's a Greek, but that one does. Let me see if it takes that. I typed in a regular A on the keyboard and then I typed in the omega symbol. I don't know if it's gonna take it. I'm just trying to make sure I'm using the right variables. Okay, yes, it did. So make sure you use the omega and not W. Then it says, explain its value relative, relative to the value of AT. Well, remember, AT, I told you my favorite formula, right, is going to be V dot A over um, the magnitude of V, okay? So we do know what the V looks like, right? It's this guy. What does, um, and we know that the magnitude of V is AW, but what does um, A look like? It's the derivative of V, right? So derivative of sine is cosine, but I'm gonna have to multiply by another W. So this is gonna be negative AW squared cosine of WT. And the same thing here, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But then the chain rule, I'm going to have to multiply by another W. So I get sine WT. I'm running out of space there, but you get the idea. And then if I do the dot product, this guy times this guy is going to be a positive A squared W cubed sine of WT or omega T cosine of omega T. Then plus this guy times this guy, which is a negative A squared W cubed sine of omega t cosine of omega t doesn't matter if these are in the opposite order or not but these are the same thing right just one's a positive and one's a negative so i essentially will get zero over a w okay and when you get that zero over anything right as long as these are not zero it's just going to be zero so then that means that we're going to select the top option option that says that AT would equal zero. Okie dokie, moving on. 
Um, okay, 10 and 11 are video questions. So literally number nine is our last one in this section. Nice, okay. So this one I am gonna use the, I don't know if you wanna call it the cheater method or whatnot, but I am going to use the, um, the derivatives here. So this one's long, so give me one moment. Okay, so the thing about number nine, and I am gonna need a whole nother sheet, so I'm gonna actually change this page and go over here to try to do number nine. Now the thing is, is that I eventually, it says find the t, the vectors t and n, and we already know when we find n, we can use, um, T with T prime with the number already plugged in, right? So that when we find the magnitude of T prime, doing it with the number already plugged in is easier than just leaving it with T prime of T, okay? So let's just go ahead and go for it. Let's see what we, how we do this. Um, I am going to have, oh gosh, I, it's in, in, oh gosh. Okay, I'm just gonna talk it out then. I can't do the problem because it's not, it doesn't have any red in it, okay? And I don't wanna do it for you, being that it doesn't have any red in it, okay? So I'm just gonna give you a hint or a guide on how to do this problem, okay? You want to find r prime of t, okay? Then you want to find the magnitude of r prime. Or no, you don't, you don't need to. So, Again, I'm trying to keep this short and simple so you don't have to worry about so much algebra and you can just mess around with numbers, okay? So you first find R of T. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna find R prime of one because T zero is one. And then the next thing you're gonna do is find the magnitude of R prime of one. So that together you can find T of one which would be r prime of one over the magnitude of r prime of one. So once you have these two parts, you basically put it together in the fraction and you've got that first box, okay? So whatever you get here will go in that first box, okay? Box one. Now, the fifth thing that you'll do is you will take, um, this one's hard, okay? So you have to find r, the magnitude of r prime. Now you have to find it, okay? So you can't plug in the number. You have to do the magnitude of this, whatever you get, okay? Then you're gonna find what t looks like, which is gonna be r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. Um, once you know what that looks like, you're gonna find t prime, okay? Once you have t prime, you're going to find t prime of one. Then you're going to find the magnitude of t prime of one. And then you're gonna find the normal vector of one, which is t prime of one over t prime, magnitude of t prime of one which is basically taking eight and nine on top of each other. When you're done with that, you will get item two, okay? Then for 11, what you're gonna do is according to that definition, B is going to be in, or no, I'm sorry, T goes first. T cross product within. But since they're asking you for B of one, right? You just need to take T of one cross with N of one, okay? And once you find that cross product, that will be what goes into that third box, okay? So that's the game plan. There's 11 pieces of this problem that you have to do, 11 pieces. It's a long problem but I can't do it for you because if I do, I'm giving you all the answers, okay? But you do have the game plan. Um, if 
you get stuck or you're not getting the right answer for a certain part, again, you can always text me um, and ask me how to get through that particular part, okay? But I definitely don't want to do it because if I do it, I'm going to give you the answer, okay? Um, but that's it for this section. Um, and then I will be working during the week um, on getting the um, next week stuff. I'm trying to stay like super ahead so that those of you that have like plans coming and you know you're going to miss a certain test date or anything like that, you can kind of work ahead. Okay. So I'm trying to stay ahead of this class. Thought I had all these videos recorded, but I did not. So I'm having to do them now. So yeah, you get a fresh batch particularly pertaining to everything that you're seeing in this class. So that's great. So bye now.